Oh, good day, everyone. Welcome back to the channel. Just uh, shuffling a few sheep around today. So these girls are going to go in the yards so we can get another mob around there, out here, around there, and way out that way. But uh, yeah, joys of having crop paddocks where they are and lots of different mobs this year. And no laneways. We might get some laneways, but one day we'll see. Probably not, but maybe one day. Anyway, enjoy. Slow. Last paddock we got to move through, just heading down that gate down there. But uh, this is sort of making me think a wee bit. This is pretty much as much grass as we've got anywhere on farm. Um, and I'm seriously thinking that mob of ewes that are currently in the yards that are coming back to that paddock right there they might have to come in here next I was hoping to save this for lambs but they might have to come in here next and I might have to split the paddock in half of the break fence we're early March and we're already talking about break fencing and that is horrifically scary but it is what it is getting a bit of rain today that rain is unforecast. Ignore the two boys over there playing silly buggers, they're having fun. Uh, rain that wasn't forecast, which is making it really hard to get this nitrogen fertilizer on, which is going to make a difference if we get rain. But the problem is the forecasters keep forecasting rain, like a week, 10 days out, decent amounts. Then as it gets closer, they take it away. And then sometimes we get some of it, sometimes we don't. And it's getting really, really frustrating. I know they've got a hard job to do too, but uh, yeah, lots of false promise. Then they take it away, so we make different plans. And then as it turns out, we've got to put the nitrogen on and possibly could have got a lot of benefit out of it. So we're at early March now, and we've got about a month before we start essentially losing money on when their nitrogen's applied. If it's applied in April, we're going to get a lower response as opposed to if we had good weather right now. Um, and if it's applied in May, we get a really, really, really bad response. But at that point, we're pretty desperate too. So uh, yeah, fingers crossed we get some steady rain sometime soon. And there the girls go in the new home for the next, hopefully seven or eight days. There's about 10 heat days in this paddock, so um, yeah. Not a huge amount of cover in there, but for 900 years, 930 odd years, surely they should uh, they should be fine for a wee while. So this is why I don't recommend growing coxfoot and high fertility soil in good ground in Southland. You can see over there, nice and dark green. You can come just to here. That's a gateway, obviously. Stop going through there all the time. High fertility. Just here, we have uh, kind of hard to pick, but there's rye grass down in here. Here we go. That rye grass, other oh, desirable grasses. Coxfoot, Coxfoot. It is so incredibly dominant, it's not funny. We didn't put much in here, it was a bit of an experiment, but uh, fair to say we won't be doing it again. Shush, shush for a minute, guys, shush. And we'll let these light girls back out. Well guys, we put the net in last night and uh, we got one fella. So we had a bit of a mishap with the SIP mower the other day. I was doing a bit of topping and uh, finished the paddock and lifted the mower up and it started creeping down really, really fast and I thought, oh, don't like that. It's probably going to take two or three minutes to creep the whole way down, but uh, every time I lifted it back up, we was shooting oil at the end of the ram. Anyway, I'll show you what happened. So here's the ram. And I don't know if you can see way up in there. You probably can't. Anyway, there's a bit of rust up in the head of there. And it's not really pleasing me very much. There's a breather in the head of the ram. Just the whole little wee brass pins, they'll wedge into a hole. And uh, yeah, it bleeds out into this pin right here. So the air just goes up, it goes out there, so it's back down in there. Anyway, water's been getting down in there. And it's caused the head of this here to rust. That is not impressive. You'll learn about that in a minute. Um, yeah, which has caused these seals to fail. Now, these are new seals. Priced out a new ram. 
and it was going to be $2,100 for the new RAM. There's the old one. So I thought we'd have a go. That seal there's fine. Hadn't been leaking a bit. It's just this one. Right. I'm not going to show you what I did to that. But see that sender punch hole there? That caused all of these problems. That is what the manufacturer, SIP, decided it was a great idea to do to lock it on there. I'm not a fan of that idea, and that kind of piss poor engineering is uh, why I won't buy another SIP. Look, I've got to admit, in a lot of ways it's been a great wee mower. It really has. It's been cheap, it's been quite good, the bar is good, the gearbox has seemed great. They are very well built, but the rest of the machine is just made of soft, shitty metal. And I just, I don't know. They're bigger ones, I would hope, and made of better quality steel. Um, but I just can't risk it, so I'm going to stick with the more renowned, renowned brands from now on. Cavernland um, is not one of them, to be fair. We bought that because the finance deal was right. It was bloody perfect. And uh, the price was right, and they're a nice wee machine. They're light. They follow the ground really well. Uh, there's a lot of things about it I like. Cavernland mowers have a mixed reputation, um, but we'll see how it goes. But realistically, I'm thinking Class, Coon, Crone, uh, what else is out there that's good? Uh, maybe Pottinger, but really I think those those main three brands, Class, Coon and Crone, um, will be what we'll be buying in the future when we've got our own money to spend as we see fit. It was just a matter this year with getting the Cavernland, oh, if Cavernland goes good I'll get another one. Um, but yeah, it really was a, a price thing this year because first year trading, first year in, a, in business on our own, we really had to make sort of shorter term economic decisions. But we had to get the job done. Oh, I'm sick to death of spending 150, 200 hours a year mowing, so yeah. But anyway, that is, I don't know about this SIP. I'm going to weld the head of that. Uh, think about welding it. Got to make sure I protect that seal because I'm not going to take it off there. Um, yeah, I'll see what I think. Right, so there we go. That bit's all good, that bit's all good. That's a bit shit there, but we'll deal with that. It's going to help hold it. Um, now I'm just going to put a bit of that stuff on the end of it. I was thinking about painting it. I haven't got any cold golf. Got a wee bit of PA10, but um, I'm actually thinking a bit of rescue grease in the end of there might be a better thing. But uh, yeah, I think that's what I'm going to use. There we go, that stuff there. And it is brilliant. Just a type of grease that it's meant for use in the marine industry to prevent corrosion in salt water. But uh, yeah, it sticks pretty well. And it, yeah, it's really good stuff where it does manage to stay. But, like I say, I haven't got any cold gal. Um, PA10 I don't think is quite going to be up to it, so we'll see how that goes. Now we're going to get the rust out of the head of this ram, which I'm not entirely sure how to do. Well, we did not expect to be doing this in March. Is what it is. Girls didn't take much encouragement, crikey. No. Don't need a dog behind them. No. So these are the, the lighter use. They're not looking too bad. They're quite hungry here. Don't worry about that. But condition wise there, I reckon they're acceptable. I'm pretty happy with how they've held up actually. Um, they're probably on par with the, with the bigger mob now, although that said they've been getting fed a lot better. Um, yeah. Yeah. And there they go. They thought they were staying in here on this stuff, which uh, no girls. We've got to do some saving beautiful quality tucker for, for lambs. But uh, there we go. First mob of sheep behind a break fence for the season. Oh, that is a scary but at the same time kind of good sight. So the whole reason we're doing this, um, big paddocks have their bonuses, but controlling pasture and growing more grass is certainly not one of them. So the idea is they're coming to this break. Now I'm not measuring the feed here, so I don't know how long they'll be here. I'm guessing there's only 600 ewes there, 550, 600 ewes. They might be four or five days here, um, four or five days on the other side. Now in theory they'd get nine days out of the whole paddock as one, but there's two issues that come to there. One is that for the last two days they're in this whole paddock. So we'll say they get 10 days in the paddock, five this side, five the other. For the last day they're in here, they're not getting enough. But for the first three days, they were getting more than they needed. Same deal on the other side. 
So they're only having one hungry day, or well, it's not hungry day, it's just the day they're not quite getting as much as they need per break. Whereas if we gave them the whole paddock, you'd probably find that would blow out to three days. The first sort of five days, they'd get way too much and they'd waste a bit of that. And then, uh, yeah, just in any convert energy conversions and shit. And then, yeah, they'd have three hungry days in a row and they'd, they'd lose a bit of weight potentially. They'd be gaining weight while well, they're in here, but ideally, with, with what we're doing here, they'll come out of the paddock heavier, only by a few grams, but heavier than if we just gave them the whole paddock. The other issue is that they're gonna graze this half out in five days, then they're gonna graze that half out in five days. So when they come out of the paddock, this half is gonna have five days of regrowth on it. Now, at the moment, that's not much. Probably five days closer to starting growing again. But either way, we're five days ahead on half the paddock. And all it's taken to do that is 15 minutes to put up a brake fence. So this paddock is quite big for a flat paddock and we do have plans to split it in half. But once again, um, this one's probably not a priority. We've got other issues, other paddocks that are bigger issues around the place. Um, another possible benefit, they camp up the top of this paddock right in that far corner. And they don't go down there and eat the grass down there. So there's quite a bit of feed down there. Because they're not going to make it the whole way to that corner, they'll be more inclined to go and eat the grass down there without having to be pushed too hard. Same deal on the other side. So, yeah, everything's a bonus with it from, from this point of view, apart from the fact that we have to do the work of putting the fences up, which is <coughs> real first world problem, isn't it? <laughs> anyway, that's that job done. We'll go and have a look at this mower. Boy, oh, crikey, it's hot this afternoon. Anyway, we've had a bit of success with the mower. Look at that bloody hair, would you? But it is not what you might think we did. So that is this mower's ram. That is the spring tension thing that we never use because we want a fair bit of ground pressure for topping anyway. Um, that couldn't go back on because that pin was too big for the crone ram. Now this is pretty rough. I'm going to get some uh, spaces made up to go in there over winter. And the same thing in there. This is okay. Well, that doesn't look very flash, but going to do the job. Let's go see how she lifts. Now... This ram is a little bit shorter than the other one, but it has a longer end on the ram, so I'm presuming it's got less travel. Um, we'll see how this works out though. It's overall fully extended longer, but that's because there's a great big cast piece on the end of it that goes down, so we'll see what happens out there. All right, we'll open the window for this. We are in float. So if we lift it all the way up, let's see when the ram gets to the end of its travel. Must have a maximum height set there, and we do. Crank that the whole way up. Oh no, look at that. I think we're going to be good actually. Drop that back down. So where it's supposed to run. See that we mark there, and then go back up a wee bit. Right where that pin is there, that's about where we're supposed to sit. About there. Right, I'm going to close the window to lift it because I don't know what will happen. Right. Moment of truth. Well, we're lifting. Very, very slowly. I've got the spool set to like 4%. We'll see what happens. How far up do we get? Gonna be close. Look at that! Well, that looks straight to me. Gotta remember the tractor's landing over a bit here. Crikey, that's good. 